those who survived the battle would look after the widows and the orphans of their colleagues who fell and gave their life for Afghanistan. Yes, Dr. Shirouch, it is much more humane, it is much higher ethical standard than the hypocritical pretense that we find in the West about marrying only one wife but having ten sweethearts with no protection, with no legality, which is progressive. <laughs> Dr. Shirouch is telling us that Prophet Muhammad was allowed to marry as much as he wished. Let me remind you, Dr. Shirouch, لا يحل لك النساء من بعد ولا أن تبدل بهن من أزواج ولو أعجبك حسنهن. No women are allowed to you, O Muhammad, in marriage, nor even changing any wife, even if you liked their beauty. If all of his wife died after that verse, he would have not been permitted to marry a single one. And let me point out that the polygamous marriage of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is the greatest evidence of his humanity. For 25 years, from the age of 25 to more than 50, he was married to only one wife, Khadija, who was 15 years older than, she, than he was. And he did not marry anyone besides her. And the marriages, polygamous marriages of the Prophet fell within the last seven years in his last years of his life. And if you study Dr. Shirush, each one of them, and I have them detailed on my tapes, in album nine of Islamic, uh, album 10, uh, sorry, 11 of the Islamic teaching tape, you will find that each one has a story that shows the humanity of Prophet Muhammad. Let me give you one example. Umm Salama, a woman who was very old, she had four orphans and her husband died. Abu Bakr, a companion of the Prophet, offered to marry her. She refused. You know why she refused? She said, I don't want to be a burden. Who's interested in an old woman with four orphans? So she refused. Umar went. She refused. And the Prophet heard about her suffering. So he offered himself to her. And she gave the same reason. I didn't want because I would be a burden. And she gave other reasons. I said, don't worry. The children would be like my children. The marriage to Aisha radiallahu anha and all this insinuation about rape. I think if you look at it carefully, you know that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam had his contract written, marital contract, yet the actual consummation of marriage took place years later when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam went to Medina. And there is evidence. You have at least six or seven years to be able to distinguish and accept Islam and then you have the 20 remaining years of, of the mission of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Finally, two quick questions. One is the question of epilepsy. I must tell you, Dr. Shirouz, that anyone with the slightest knowledge of medicine or psychiatry know that this is an absolute nonsense today. And people have studied the various form of epilepsy, none of which come any close to the teaching of the Quran uttered by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As one psychiatrist puts it, if the wisdom in the Quran and its impact in history was a result of epileptic seizure, the world would be much better having more epileptic people like Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Finally, you said that somebody said that Muhammad was a nation builder. Yes, Dr. Shirush, he was a nation builder, an ummah, a community of believer. He built a community of believer to raise the word of Allah and to communicate it to the rest of mankind. Yes, he is a nation builder par excellence. <laughs> We now have about an hour for questions and answers. We would like to take a written question and an oral question from the microphone over there. And uh, if you want to stand in a queue, I will take a written question and an oral question. The time limit for the question is three minutes for the answer and two minutes for a response. Like if the question is to Dr. Shroosh, he will answer in three minutes, and Dr. Jamal Bada will respond in two, uh, two minutes. Uh, please, for the time, don't repeat the questions. If the question was asked before, then the answer should be enough because we have limited time. Thank you very much. And we will start the first question from the floor. Yes. <clears throat> well, uh, we were asked to uh, volunteer to identify ourselves, but we're not compelled to. But in any case, uh, my name is uh, Jeffrey Lang, and I'm a math professor here at uh, the University of Kansas. And I became a Muslim after reading the Quran, so I was very interested in the lecture tonight, so I appreciate both of the speakers coming here. But in any case, I would like to direct my question to Dr. Shirosh. Uh, 
there were three primary components to his uh, attack tonight, or his, his debate. And the three charges he basically lodged were uh, that uh, against Islam, these three charges. There are external religious influences, uh, religious influences outside of Islam filtering their way in, or making their way in. Uh, language in the scripture, other than that spoken by the prophet messenger himself. And uh, internal inconsistencies and contradictions inside the scripture. Now, honestly, I think we all agree that Jamal, Dr. Jamal Bedoui did a fine job of refuting these. But nonetheless, I have this question to Dr. Shorosh. He certainly must be aware of the fact that these same arguments could be lodged against Christianity in the Bible with greater force and more massive evidence. And in fact, it has been done throughout the last few centuries of Christianity by Christian and Western scholars. Now, if these are the criterion by which he rejects faith in a certain religion, my question to him is, then how can he believe in his own? And that's all there is to it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. I appreciate that very much. I would like to answer by saying to you that our meeting here this afternoon, this evening, is a tremendous experience because I would like to ask Mr. Bedawi and all Muslims here, can we carry on such a debate in Saudi Arabia like we're doing here or any Muslim country? And as far as our friend mentioning about these characters who become Muslims, what happens to Christians who become Muslims? They have to flee from the Muslim countries because of the violence against them as they are murdered. And about somebody making a book like the Quran, the first two who recited scripture like the Quran were murdered by the orders of Muhammad himself. To answer the question of the professor, I would say this. We talk about inspiration. We believe in the inspiration of the Bible, meaning that those who wrote it, wrote it without any error. Secondly, when we talk about the inspiration of the scripture, we talk about the inspiration from the viewpoint of revelation. What is the difference? Revelation is God's revealing, God revealing his truth through your mind, through your vision, through your hearing, impressions you have. The inspiration is the putting down of the writing. Like we believe that the Holy Spirit of God is the one who led the writers, 44 of them. There is greater validity to the Bible because we got 44 writers instead of just one. As for the matter of these three things here, it is true our Bible has been attacked, and I'm sure it'll continue to attack, but archaeologically, theologically, ethically, and otherwise, the Bible has stood its ground because it is the Word of God, and like Jesus said, heavens and earth shall pass away, but my word shall stand forever. They are not borrowed like the Quran is from previous documents. Thank you. First of all, I think the remark made by Dr. Lang is a very intelligent one, and I can't, I find it very difficult to explain the fact that Mithraism, a, myth, a mythology that existed before Christianity, believed that Mithra was the son of God, born on the 25th of December, died and went to the earth for three days and rose up to heaven to reconcile man to God. It's very difficult to explain if we follow the logic presented to us by Dr. Shirush. But the other point about those who became Muslims, I object to calling them characters. They are respectable people, and in most cases, they are of the high intellectual capacity and integrity. So I don't think I call them character. And if a Muslim is, becomes a Christian, I would not even call him a character because there is a basic human decency to respect them and their right for choice. The fact that some people might be persecuted by one side or the other. There are people in Egypt who were murdered by their Christian families because they embraced Islam as well. I do not blame Christianity or Christ for that either. Uh, Dr. Shirush is telling us that those who tried to imitate the Quran were killed. I think he might have been referring to Musaylama, the liar. And Musaylama was killed after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Musaylama never claimed to have anything similar to the Quran. He simply said to the Prophet, all right, why claim the prophethood for yourself? Why can't we split it? You take a little part and then take a little part. 
And now, when it comes to the question of revelation, Dr. Shirush is telling us that all the scriptures are written with divine